Here is a mechanism that I invented between molecules that don't exist. The question is, how do we draw a potential energy curve that corresponds to this mechanism? Well, first of all, I kind of want to know what the overall reaction is here. D cancels with D, similar to Hess's law. E cancels with E, and my overall reaction is A plus three Bs reacting to eventually give me an F plus a G. Cool. Now if I knew what the delta H was for that reaction, I could better predict where the reactants and products will, last, will land here. I'm going to invent one and I'm gonna say it's an exothermic reaction, a negative delta H, which means it is giving off energy overall. My reactants, my A plus three Bs, compared to my F plus Gs are higher. Reactants higher than products for an exothermic reaction. Now, a potential energy curve shows humps for each step of the reaction. And what really matters if you weren't given the delta H for each step itself is that the slowest rea uh, step of the reaction, the slowest elementary step, has the highest hump. It's controlling the activation energy for the reaction. Now this is my first reaction of the three, so I'm gonna make my first hump the tallest. There we go, that's step one of the reaction. Now I'm gonna do a second step of the reaction. Because it's faster, I want it to make that hump smaller. It can't go any higher than the slowest one. And I'm gonna include a third one. I'm gonna make it go higher than the second one, but, uh, but lower than the first one and this is a valid potential energy curve for this reaction. The activation energy is defined as the amount of energy it takes to get from reactants to the top of the highest hump. I've labeled that here. Now that's actually EA of the forward reaction. If this was a reversible reaction, I would have a second activation energy over here from react or products to the highest hump. That would be the activation energy of the reverse reaction. Teachers who ask you to label delta H want you to draw arrows from products to reactants. Delta H equals negative 100 kilojoules. I guess I shouldn't have an arrow there. A downward arrow to show that we are releasing heat. And the only other things we could label here are these points which represent the intermediates of the reaction and these points which represent the transition states of the reaction. Intermediates are somewhat stable or at least locally stable on the potential energy curve and transition states are very unstable. Transition states often have half bonds and when a complex, an activated complex, has half bonds that I don't want to call it a molecule, that complex is either going to break back apart to give you reactants or continue forward to give you products. So, if you have enough energy to just barely get up here, some of the activated complexes you form will go on to form these intermediates, that's D in this case, and some of them won't quite have enough energy to get over that hump and we'll slide back to become reactants and those will be unsuccessful collisions. This is the potential energy curve showing all the information that I've ever asked teachers to show. Last things I wanna point out is that potential energy, sometimes in kilojoules or kilojoules per mole, is on the y-axis, although in university often you'll use delta G on this axis. And reaction progress goes at the bottom because you have 0% progress here because you're still reactants and 100% progress here because you're completely products. And that's it. Molecules will react to, to form this transition state if you have enough energy and then form this intermediate. Then if you've gotten up to this high of an energy, it's very likely you'll be able to get over these humps as well, which is why these reactions are faster. Again, Slowest step gives you the highest hump on the barrier. I wanna throw out one more thing actually, which is what if there was a catalyst? I'm going to draw you a new potential energy curve, assuming that there was a catalyst here. I'm gonna start 
with the same reactants, but I'm going to give you a different pathway right here. There we go, and now I'm actually gonna trace the rest of it. What I have done here is assumed that the catalyst replaces step one, the slow step, with two other steps that are both faster. Probably A and B reacting with the catalyst to make something. Then, that catalyst doing its work and spitting out D. A catalyst is not consumed in the reaction, that's why I was careful to say it reacts with A and B, but then is regenerated in the second step. And why I replaced a single step in the original mechanism with two steps of the catalyst, because you need one step for the reactants to attach to the catalyst and another step for the catalyst to be regenerated. A catalyzed reaction should have a lower activation energy barrier, and that's why I made those humps shorter overall than the original reaction. Bam! I talked about that for almost 11 minutes, but that's how it is. Good luck drawing your own potential energy curves and interpreting them as well. Best of luck.